guys and welcome back to the Space in London channel. I'm Janelle and today we are going to talk all about weaving coasters. This is a great way to gift your weaving especially since we are quickly approaching Christmas and I think it's just such a nice way to weave something for someone but maybe you don't know if they love woven wall hangings or what style they would love but something like a coaster that's really functional is a great gift for pretty much anyone. Everyone can use coasters. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk everything coasters. So the general size for a coaster is usually about three inches by four inches. So I decided to make mine just like four inches by four inches, make it a nice square. The actual warp strings will become our little tassels on the coaster. I am using Burnett Honeycrafter cotton yarn for both the warp and the weft and I decided to use one of my little Becca looms which I sell in the shop. Because it has five ends per inch, I wanted this to have a tighter warp set. You can do five ends per inch on any loom really, you just have to figure out where you need to skip or double up and then you can use a twining stitch to spread out the warp which I do show in our warp set video so you can check that out there. So the reason for that being I do want this to be a tighter woven cloth because it is a functional item. So when you're talking something like a coaster or a cloth or a towel generally you're going to want those to be a little bit more compressed so they're more durable. So if they get wet or you need to wash them they're not going to just kind of get completely misshapen. So again, we have five ends per inch and I'm going to be weaving this very tightly, meaning I'm going to press my weft strings down really nice and tight. So I'm using the Off White. This is, I think this might be another brand, but it's basically the exact same thing. This is something you'd really commonly use to knit or crochet washcloths. So that's where I know it's gonna be really durable. I have seen coasters being woven with a plied wool yarn as well so you can go that route but I just want to do something that's going to be really practical for whoever is using this. And we're going to talk about interlocking today as well. I wanted to do sort of, and you'll see this as it comes through, I wanted to do this design where it's kind of white on one side and black but the the yarns are kind of going like this so there's going to be like this really organic kind of interlocking going on. I've seen this before and so I thought we would try that today with these coasters. The first thing I'm going to do is just a quick twining stitch and we do have a twining stitch video, I'll link it here. And that's just going to be a really good base for our weaving and I am using cardboard as I always do simply again just to have something nice and firm to beat down onto and keep everything really nice and straight. Okay, so now we have this twining stitch there just as a nice way to start and spread out your warp nice and evenly. And now we're just gonna go ahead and get started weaving. So I'm going to be using all plain weave. This is going to be a really organic type of weave. So I'm not following a pattern. I'm not trying to be pre too precise. So I'll show you a couple of rows and then I'll show you when it's finished. So I've woven plain weave out towards the center of my weaving. And I'm actually just going to slip this black right through the center. I'm doing all my knots. And all I'm going to do is actually loop these two pieces of yarn around each other like so. So now you can see that these shapes are going to be interlocked, which means there's not gonna be a gap that could sort of open up in the middle. And that's another thing with something that you're going to be using for a coaster or a cloth or anything like that. You don't want there to be any big gaps or anything that things could snag on. So I'm going to leave myself a decent tail in the back and then just keep going with my plain weave now with the black all the way across. Now we can go back with the white and working the other way. So now I'm switching back to the black. Again, making sure I'm not letting this suck in too much. So 
I'm always adjusting as I go. And now I'm going to take this black a few rows further. So you can set your black up there and then again going in with the white and we're meeting up with the black. So again, we wanna interlock these pieces so we don't have any gaps. So I'm just going to loop that around. and then keep weaving back the other way. So I'm going to keep going now, and you can kind of see this all come together, but the concept is the same for every row. We're weaving a little bit in with one color, and then meeting up with the other color, looping them around each other, and then going back the other way. It's a really simple concept, but as you see the pattern come through, it's a really cool effect. So now I've reached the end of where I'm wanting to weave to, so I'm just going to do another twining stitch just like we did at the beginning. So that is the end of the coaster, so now I'm just going to flip this over and tuck in all my ends. Um, I'm going to get a smaller needle because this eye is going to be tough to get through. And again, because this is a very functional piece of cloth, I'm gonna try to tuck these ends in in a way that they kind of disappear because we do want this to be able to be reversible essentially. So we're gonna try to do that here. So I'm going to try to only tuck in the black yarn inside black yarn and the white only inside white so that it doesn't poke through and I think that will get me the look I am going for. Now right here, I have an end that is gonna look like this if I don't loop it back around. So I am just gonna go back around that last warp string just to try to fill in that gap a little bit. You can see I'm going through quite a few weft strings just so that we make sure everything's really secure because again, this is a kind of cloth that is going to be handled more, whereas a woven wall hanging, you hang it on the wall and you pretty much don't touch it again. So right there, I did have to come out through some of the white strings, but you actually can't see it because it's such a tight woven cloth. So I'm gonna call that good. So now we get to take this piece off the loom and do the finishing. Um, if you do decide to cut it off your loom, which I think I'm going to, actually I can just loop it off because cotton is stretchy. So I'm just gonna get all these loops off the loom. So now I have it laying on the table here and I'm just kind of, you can see, pushing it down, making sure everything looks even before I go tying everything. The nice thing about cotton too is it is quite stretchy and forgiving, so you can see that I can kind of manipulate it and that's looking pretty good there. So I'm just ensuring that everything is nice and straight and then I'm simply going to and this is one of those projects that you will want to make sure you have an even amount of warp strings um, because now I'm just going to tie these in groups of two using overhead knots making sure those knots are quite tight and I'm going to do that on both sides So 
So since this wants to slide all over the place, I just grabbed a couple of old books and I'm going to let the books kind of weigh down one end of this so that I can tie these knots without it flopping all over the place. Okay, so I just found an end that I didn't tuck in. Um, so I'm going to do that now before I get too far. And on this end, since this is where I tied my warp onto the loom, I'm actually gonna have to cut all these loops in order to get my groups of two without having the loops kind of in the way. Okay, so now we have all the ends cut on either side. So now we're gonna just trim these off so they're a little bit shorter. So one way to do this is actually to take a, like a ruler and a rotary cutter and just cut them that way so they're nice and straight. I think I'm going to kind of eyeball this, but if you wanna be a little bit more precise, you can definitely do that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and I think that's about a good length. And then we have cute little tassels there. It's almost like a little rug for your drink. So then we can actually just flip this over, cone this out a little bit. I'm gonna flip that over, fold it in half so I can figure out the correct length on this end. looking pretty good there. So here is my little coaster. As you can see, because of the way I tucked those ends in, other than this one little spot that doesn't look quite perfect, but either way, it is definitely a reversible piece, which is kind of nice for something like this. So you're not trying to like look at it when you're using it and figure out which way is the right way and which way is the wrong way. And this is just such a great gift idea. I think anyone can use coasters. You could even, you know, use this as a decor item to set a little candle on or something like that if somebody doesn't need coasters, but I think these would make a great gift, a great stocking stuffer. This is a great way to gift your weaving without putting so much time and energy in as a woven wall hanging might be. Again, if you don't know somebody's style, this is a safe gift, I would say. Something to note while I have you here, I would not weave a coaster on anything smaller than this loom I was using today. And this has a length of 12 inches. So keep that in mind if you're doing this project, make sure you have at least a length of 12 inches or if you were kind of batch working this and if you haven't seen our batch working video, I'll put a link here. If you're batch working, just make sure that for each coaster you've got a 12 inch length so that's just going to give you lots of room to tie those knots um, if you were finishing them a different way that might be a different case but I would say you want that length just so that you're not dealing with super short ends so there's obviously tons of different designs you could do on a little coaster like this I've seen stripes you could do a checkered plaid or really any kind of plaid Again, the biggest thing is make sure you're weaving quite tightly to make sure that this is gonna be a durable piece of cloth for a coaster. And I don't think there would be any issue with hand washing this. I wouldn't put it in my washing machine, but I think it would be totally fine to hand wash this. This kind of cotton is definitely going to stand up for that. And if you do wash them, you just wanna make sure that you're drying them nice and flat. So reshape it and let it dry flat and you'll be good to go. All right, you guys, so that is weaving coasters. I hope you got a lot of inspiration out of this project and I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. So make sure you use hashtag SL Weaving Club over on Instagram and also tag me at Spruce and Linen on Instagram so I can see and share your work. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.
weaving coasters. I hope you got some really great inspiration and I really hope, I don't know what to say. Okay. <clears throat> Make sure you use hashtag, <laughs> hashtag. I don't even know, I don't know what that is.